Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about solving equations by completing the square. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. We're given this problem right here, a squared plus 2a minus 3 equals 0, and we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do, let's get it in the form of a squared plus 2a, and we're going to add a 3 to both sides. So that equals a positive 3 right there. Okay. Now we have to look at our b value, b value being 2. 2 divided by 2, we use our formula, and we square that. What does that come out to be? Well, 1. So with that information, we say a squared plus 2a plus 1 equals 3 plus 1. We're going to choose to add a 1 to both sides of the equation. That allows us to write the left-hand side as a perfect square. That is a plus 1, all squared, is equal to 4 here. We now can solve by, well, taking the square root of both sides. And we have a plus 1 equals plus or minus, well, square root of 4 is 2. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. 2. So now we have a plus 1 equals plus or minus 2. We can write it like this, a plus 1 equals positive 2, and a plus 1 equals a negative 2. Solve each one, subtract 1 to both sides, a equals 1. Subtract 1 to both sides, a equals a negative 3. And so my two solutions here are a equals a positive 1 and a negative 3. We're given this problem right here, a squared minus 2a minus 8 equals 0, and we need to solve this by completing the square first thing I'm going to do is, well, add an 8 to both sides. So we have a squared minus 2a equals a positive 8. So with that, bring, uh, bringing that over there, I look at my b value, which is negative 2. I'm going to use my formula, negative 2 divided by 2, all squared. What does that come out to be? Well, it's a positive 1. So now we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equal sign. a squared minus 2a plus 1 equals 8 plus 1. Now from here, we can complete or turn this into a perfect square. a minus 1 squared is the same thing as a squared minus 2a plus 1, and 8 plus 1 as well, a 9. Solve now, we take a square root of both sides of the equal sign. We have a minus 1 left over, and the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. Now I can break this down to be a minus 1 equals a positive 3, and a minus 1 equals a negative 3, and solve both of them. Add a 1 to both sides, a equals 4. Add a 1 to both sides, a equals a negative 2. And so my two solutions here are just a equals 4 and a negative 2. We're given this problem right here, p squared plus 16p minus 22 equals 0. And we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is add a 22 to both sides. So we have p squared plus 16p equals a positive 22. Now from there, I'm looking at my b value, which is 16. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it. Well, that comes out to be a 64. So now we can add 64 to both sides of the equal sign p squared plus 16p plus 64 equals 22 plus 64. The left-hand side is, well, a perfect square now. p plus 8, all square. The right-hand side, we add that together, and we get an 86. We now have to take the square root of both sides, and we're left with, well, p plus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 86. We can break that down now to two equations, p plus 8 equals a positive square root of 86, and p plus 8 equals a negative square root of 86. Subtract the 8 to both sides for both equations, and what do we get? Well, in decimal form here, the uh, square root of 86 minus 8 is a positive 1.274 approximately. And here, p equals a negative, or approximately, a negative 17.274. So if we write those two values here as one statement, p is approximately 
and a negative 17.274. And those are our final answers. We're given this problem right here, k squared plus 8k plus 12 equals 0, and we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is subtract a 12 to both sides of the equal sign. That leaves me with a k squared plus 8k equals a negative 12. Now let's look at our b value, which is 8. Using our formula, 8 divided by 2 squared. 8 divided by 2 squared comes out to be 16. So we're going to add a 16 to both sides of the equal sign. k squared plus 8k plus 16 equals a negative 12 plus 16. The left side is now a perfect square, which is k plus 4, all squared, and negative 12 plus 16, well, that's a positive 4. Simplify this, or solve, we take the square root of both sides, and we have k plus 4 equals square root of 4, which is 2, and we have plus or minus 2 here. We can break this out to be two separate equations to solve, so k plus 4 equals a positive 2, and k plus 4 equals a negative 2. Subtract a 4 to both sides, and we have k equals a negative 2 here. Subtract a 4 to both sides, and k equals a negative 6 here. So we can say k is uh, these two numbers, negative 2 and negative 6, and that is our final answer. We're given this problem right here, r squared plus 2r minus 33 equals 0, and we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is add a 33 to both sides of the equation to bring it over to the right-hand side. So we have r squared plus 2r equals a positive 33 now. Well, with here, I'm looking at my b value. That's 2. Divide that by 2, and we square it, and we get, well, 1. So now I'm going to add a 1 to both sides of the equal sign. r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 33 plus 1. The left-hand side now is a perfect square, r plus 1, all squared, equals 33 plus 1, which is 34. Square root both sides here, and what are we left with? Well, we have an r plus 1 equals a plus or minus square root of 34. Continuing that on, we can break this apart as plus or minus, so we can write it as r plus 1 equals a positive square root of 34, and r plus 1 equals a negative square root of 34. Subtract 1 to both sides, and we're left with r equals square root of 34 minus 1, and r equals a negative square root of 34 minus 1. Those two answers in decimal form are approximately right here. 4.831 and a negative 6.831. And those two now are our final answer. But given this problem right here, a squared minus 2a minus 48 equals 0, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is add a 48 to both sides of the equation. That gives me a squared minus, not a plus, but minus, minus 2a equals, well, 48, positive 48. Now look at my b value, negative 2. I take this negative 2, I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. What does that come out to be? Well, it's just a positive 1. So now I'm going to rewrite my equation, a squared minus 2a plus 1 equals 48 plus 1. I'm going to add that plus 1 to both sides. The left-hand side now is a perfect square. a minus 1 squared equals 48 plus 1, which is, well, 49. We now can take the square root of both sides. And we have a minus 1 equals, well, the square root of 49 is 7, but that's plus or minus here. So let's break it apart into two equations. a minus 1 equals a positive 7, a minus 1 equals a negative 7. Add 1 to both sides, and we have a equals a positive 8, and add a 1 to both sides here, and a equals a negative 6. And so my two solutions here are just a equals 8, and a equals a negative 6, and again, that's our final answer. We're given this problem right here, m squared minus 12m plus 26 equals 0, and we're going to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is subtract the 26 to both sides of the equation. That gives me m squared minus 12m equals a negative 
26. I'm now going to look at my b value, which is negative 12. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square that. That comes out to be a 36. So now I'm going to take that 36, and I'm going to add it to both sides of the equation. m squared minus 12m plus 36 equals a negative 26 plus 36. And now what we're going to do is, well, keep solving, right? But the left-hand side is a perfect square. That's m minus 6 squared. Right-hand side, negative 26 plus 36 is 10. We can take the square root of both sides here, and we're left with m minus 6 equals, well, a plus or minus square root of 10. We can now break this down into two equations. We have m minus 6 equals a positive square root of 10, and m minus 6 equals a negative square root of 10. That's a 10, not a 6. There we go. That's a 10. <laughs> Add a 6 to both sides, and we have m equals square root of 10 plus 6. Add a 6 to both sides, m equals negative square root of 10 plus 6. We add these two together, or we write <laughs> this uh, square root in a regular number. When we add them together, we get the decimals, and it's approximately 9.162 and 2.838. And those two are our final answers. We're given this problem right here x squared plus 12x plus 20 equals 0, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do is we'll subtract a 20 to both sides of the equation. That gives me x squared plus 12x equals a negative 20. Now, let's look at our b value here, b value being 12. We take our 12, divide it by 2, and we're going to square it. That comes out to be 36. So we're going to add a 36 to both sides of the equation now. x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals a negative 20 plus 36. All right, left-hand side. Well, that's now a perfect square. x plus 6 here squared equals to negative 20 plus 36, which is, well, positive 16. We can now take the square root of both sides. It gives us x plus 6 here equals, well, plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. We now can break this down into two equations. x plus 6 equals a positive 4, and x plus 6 equals a negative 4. And we're going to solve both of them. Subtract a 6 to both sides, and x equals, well, 4 minus 6, a negative 2. Subtract a 6 to both sides here, and x equals negative 4 minus 6, a negative 10. And so our two solutions here are just x equals a negative 2 and negative 10, and that is our final answer. We're given this problem right here, k squared minus 8k minus 48 equals 0, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do is add a 48 to both sides of the equation. That gives us a k squared minus 8k equals a positive 48. Now with that, I'm also going to look at my b value, negative 8. Divide that by 2, and I'm going to square that. That comes out to be a positive 16. So now I'm going to add a 16 to both sides of the equation. k squared minus 8k plus 16 equals 48 plus 16. The left-hand side is now a perfect square, which is k minus 4, all squared. Right-hand side, 48 plus 16 is a 64. All right, so where do we go from here? We have to take the square root of both sides, give me k minus 4 here, and the square root of 64 is 8. But don't forget the plus and minus. We now can break this down into two equations. We have k minus 4 equals a positive 8, and k minus 4 equals a negative 8. We add a 4 to both sides, and we have k equals positive 12, and add a 4 to both sides here, and k equals a negative 4. So we can write this uh, as one statement, k equals 12 and negative 4, and that is our final answer. We're given this problem right here, p squared plus 2p minus 63 equals 0, and we want to solve this by completing the square. I'm going to add a 63 to both sides of the equation. That leaves me with a p squared plus 2p uh, equals positive 63. 
Now with that, I'm going to look at my b value, which is 2. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it. That comes out to be, well, just 1. So we're going to take this 1 and add it to both sides of the equation. p squared plus 2p plus 1 equals 63 plus 1. Left-hand side becomes, well, a perfect square. We have p plus 1 here, all squared, equals 63 plus 1, which is 64. All right. We now can take the square root of both sides of the equation. I have p plus 1 here by itself equals, well, square root of 64 is an 8, and we have plus or minus now. Well, we can break this down into two equations. p plus 1 equals a positive 8, and p plus 1 equals a negative 8. Subtract a 1 on both sides, and p equals a 7. Subtract a 1 on both sides here, and p equals a negative 9. And so our two solutions here is just p equals 7 and a negative 9. We're given this problem right here. m squared plus 2m minus 48 equals a negative 6, and we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do is add a 48 to both sides of the equation. That gives us an m squared plus 2m equals, well, negative 6 plus 48 is a 42. I'm now going to look at my b value, which is 2. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it. That comes out to be, well, just a 1. So I'm going to take that 1 and add it to both sides of my equation here. m squared plus 2m plus 1 equals 42 plus 1. All right. Left-hand side now is a perfect square. We have m plus 1 here. Square is equal to 42 plus 1, which is 43. I now have to take the square root of both sides of the equation. We have, well, there's an m. m plus 1 here is equal to, well, plus or minus square root of 43. We now can break this down into two parts. We have m plus 1 equals a positive square root of 43 and m plus 1 equals a negative square root of 43. We subtract 1 to both sides, and we have m equals square root of 43 minus 1. Subtract 1 to both sides here, and m equals a negative square root of 43 minus 1. Those now, in decimal form, are approximate here, are approximately 5.557 and negative 7.5. Seven. And so that is our final answer. We're given this problem right here. p squared minus 8p plus 21 equals 6. And we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is subtract 21 to both sides of the equation. That gives me a p squared here minus 8p equals 6 minus 21, which is a negative 15. I now look at my b value, negative 8. I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to square it. Negative 8 divided by 2 squared is a positive 16. I'm going to take that 16 and add it to both sides of the equation. p squared minus 8p plus 16 equals negative 15 plus 16. So the left-hand side now is a perfect square. I'm going to write it as p minus 4 squared equals negative 15 plus 16, which is a positive 1. I now have to take the square root of both sides, and p minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. We now can break this down into two equations. p minus 4 equals a positive 1, and p minus 4 equals a negative 1. Add a 4 to both sides, and p equals 1 plus 4, which is 5. Add a 4 to both sides here, and p equals a negative 1 plus 4, which is a positive 3. And so our two solutions here are just p equals 5 and a positive 3. We're given this problem right here. m squared plus 10m plus 14 equals a negative 7. And we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is subtract a 14 to both sides. We're left with an m squared plus 10m equals negative 7 minus 14, which is, well, a negative 21. I'm now going to look at my b value, which is 10. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it. That comes out to be a positive 25. So I'm going to take that 25 and add it to both sides of the equation. m squared plus 10m plus 25 equals negative 21 plus 
25. My left hand side now is a perfect square. m plus 5 here, all squared, is equal to, well, negative 25 plus, or negative 21 plus 25 is a positive 4. We square root both sides. We have m plus 5 here equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. We now can write this as two equations. m plus 5 equals a positive 2, and m plus 5 equals a negative 2. Subtract a 5 to both sides, and m equals 2 minus 5, which is, well, a negative 3. Subtract a 5 to both sides, that's a 5 right here, and we have m equals negative 2 minus 5, negative 7. And so our two solutions here are just m equals negative 3 and a negative 7. We're given this problem right here, v squared minus 2v equals 3. We want to solve this by completing the square. Well, the first thing I'll notice here is, well, it's already in the form I'm looking for. So I'm going to take my, uh, my b value, which is negative 2, divide that by 2, and I'm going to square that. Negative 2 divided by 2 squared is a positive 1. So I'm going to take my equation, v squared minus 2v, and I'm going to add a 1 to both sides of the equation, equals 3 plus 1. The left-hand side now is a perfect square, v minus 1, all squared. 3 plus 1 is 4. Take the square root of both sides now, and we have v minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 4, which is 2. Let's break this down into two equations, v minus 1 equals a positive 2, and v minus 1 equals a negative 2. Add 1 to both sides, and we have v equals a positive 3. Do it again here, and v equals a negative 1. And so our two solutions are just v equals 3 and a negative 1. We're given this problem right here. 5 at v squared minus 21 equals 10v, and we want to solve this by completing the square. I'm going to first actually subtract a 10v to both sides, and I'm going to add a 21 to both sides. So what does that come out to be? That's 5v squared minus 10v equals a positive 21. All right, I don't like having an a value that's more than 1. So I'm going to divide everything here by 5. That gives me a v squared by itself here, minus, well, 10v divided by 5 is a 2v, and 21 divided by 5, well, that's a 4.2, the decimal. All right, so now I'm taking my b value, negative 2, I'm going to divide it by 2, I'm going to square it, a lot of 2s there. That comes out to be a 1. We're now going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. v squared minus 2v plus 1 equals 4.2 plus 1. Left hand side is a perfect square, so we have v minus 1 squared equals 4.2 plus 1 is 5.2. We then can take the square root of both sides, and we have v minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 5.2. Since it's plus or minus, we can write this as two equations. So v minus 1 equals a positive square root of 5.2, and v minus 1 equals a negative square root of 5.2. Add 1 to both parts. v equals square root of 5.2 plus 1. Again, do the same thing. v equals a negative square root of 5.2 plus 1. So these two numbers, as a decimal, are... 3.280, rounded, and negative 1.280. We're given this problem right here. 4v squared plus 16v equals 65, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is divide all parts here by 4. I like to have my a value to be 1. So we have v squared now plus 16 divided by 4, which is a 4, 4v. 65 divided by 4 is a 16.25. Now I'm looking at my b value 4. I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. That comes out to be, well, 4. So I'm going to take that 4 and add it to both sides of the equal sign. v squared plus 4v plus 4 equals 16.25 plus 4. Left hand side is a perfect square v plus 2, all squared, and 16.25 plus 4 
is a 20.25. All right, we now can take the square root of both sides and we're left with a V plus two equals plus or minus and the square root of 20.25 comes out to be a 4.5. We now can write this as two separate equations. V plus two equals a positive 4.5 and v plus 2 equals a negative 4.5. Subtract a 2 to both sides, and v equals a 2.5. Subtract a 2 to both sides here, and v equals a negative 6.5. And so our two solutions here is just v equals a 2.5 and a negative 6.5. We're given this problem right here, 7b squared minus 14b minus 56 equals 0. And we want to solve this by completing the square. Well, I don't like having a value that's anything else besides 1. So I'm going to divide all parts here by 7. That leaves me with a b squared minus 2b minus 8 equals 0. All right. I'm going to add an 8 now to both sides. And we have b squared minus 2b equals a positive 8. Now let's look at our b value here, negative 2. Divide that by 2, and we square it. What does that come out to be? Well, a positive 1. So now we're going to add a 1 to both sides of our equation. b squared minus 2b plus 1 equals 8 plus 1. Our left-hand side is a perfect square. We have b minus 1 all squared is equal to 8 plus 1, which is 9. Take the square root of both sides here, and we have b minus 1 equals plus or minus, don't forget it, square root of 9, 3. We can break this down into two equations now. b minus 1 equals a positive 3, and b minus 1 equals a negative 3. Add a 1 to both sides, b equals 4. Do it again here, and b equals a negative 2. And so our two solutions here is just b equals 4 and negative 2. We're given this problem right here, 2n squared plus 12n plus 10 equals 0, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is actually divide all parts by 2. That leaves me with, well, an n squared plus 6n plus 5 equals 0. I'm now going to subtract a 5 to both sides of the equation, and I have n squared plus 6n equals a negative 5. So now I'm going to look at my b value, which is 6. I'm going to divide that by 2. I'm going to square it. 6 divided by 2, all squared, is a 9. So I'm going to take that 9 and add it to both sides of the equation. n squared plus 6n plus 9 equals a negative 5 plus 9. Left-hand side is a perfect square. n plus 3, that was by design, square. And negative 5 plus 9 is a positive 4. Take the square root of both sides here, and we have n plus 3 equals, well, plus or minus square root of 4, which is 2. We can break this down into two equations. n plus 3 equals a positive 2, and n plus 3 equals a negative 2. Subtract a 3 to both sides, and n equals 2 minus 3, which is a negative 1. Do it again here, and n equals a negative 2 minus 3, which is a negative 5. And so my two solutions here are just n equals a negative 1 and a negative 5. We're given this problem right here. n squared plus 13n plus 22 equals 7. And we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is well, I'll subtract a 22 to both sides. I'm left now with n squared plus 13n equals 7 minus 22, which is a negative 15. We now look at our b value, which is 13. I'm going to divide that by 2. I'm going to square the whole thing. That comes out to be a 42.25. I'm going to take that value and add it to both sides of the equation. n squared plus 13n plus 42.25 equals negative 15 plus 42.25. Left-hand side is a perfect square. That's n plus 6.5 all squared. Negative 15 plus 42.25 is a 27.25. We square root both sides here, and I'm left with n plus 6.5 equals plus or minus the square root of 
since this is plus or minus, we can separate it to two equations. n plus 6.5 equals a positive 27.25, and n plus 6.5 equals a negative square root of 27.25. Subtract a 6.5 to both sides. And n equals, well, square root of, we'll write out like this, square root of 27.25 minus 6.5. And n equals a negative square root of 27.25 minus 6.5. Those two decimals are approximately here. Negative 1.280, rounded, and negative 11.27, oh, whoopsie, yeah, there's a 7 here. 11, negative 11.720. And those two are our final answer. We're given this problem here. 5n squared plus 19n minus 68 equals a negative 2. And we have to solve by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is, well, add a 68 to both sides. What does that leave me with? Well, I have 5n squared here plus 19n equals negative 2 plus 68 positive 66. All right, I don't like an a value here that's, well, anything besides one. So I'm gonna divide all parts by five, both sides of the equation by five. So that eliminates the five here, so we have n squared, plus 19 divided by five is 3.8 n, and that's equal to, well, 66 divided by five is a 13.2. My b value is 3.8, so I'm going to take that 3.8, I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. That comes out to be a 3.61. So I'm going to add that to both sides of my equation. n squared plus 3.8, and plus 3.61 equals 13.2 plus 3.61. Left-hand side is a perfect square now, which is n plus 1.9 square, and 13.2 plus 3.61 is an, uh, 16, uh, 18, 16, follow my notes here, 16.81. I take the square root of both sides here, and n plus 1.9 equals a plus or minus, and this actually comes out to be a 4.1. All right. So now we have uh, n plus 1.9 equals plus or minus 4.1. We can break this apart. So we have n plus 1.9 equals a positive 4.1, and n plus 1.9 equals a negative 4.1. Got to keep my decimals in line. We subtract a 1.9 to both sides here, and n equals 4.1 minus 1.9, which is a 2.2. Subtract a 1.9 to both sides, and n equals negative 4.1 minus 1.9, which is a negative 6. And so our two solutions here is just n equals a 2.2 and a negative 6. We're given this problem right here. r squared minus 9r minus 38 equals a negative 9. And we need to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is add a 38 to both sides of the equation. That gives us here r squared minus 9r equals a negative 9 plus 38, which is a positive 29. I'm now going to look at my b value, negative 9. Negative 9 divided by 2, all squared. Well, that comes out to be a 20.25. So I'm going to take that 20.25 and add it to both sides of my equation. r squared minus 9r plus 20.25 equals 29 plus 20.25. Okay. Left-hand side is a perfect square now. R minus 4.5, all square. And 29 plus 20.25 is a 49.25 here. Square root both sides. And I have an R minus 4.5 equals a plus or minus the square root of 49.25. We now have a plus or minus, we can write two equations. r minus 4.5 equals positive square root of 49.25. And 
and r minus 4.5 equals a negative square root of 49.25. Add a 4.5 to both sides. And we have r equals a positive square root of 49.25 plus 4.5. The same thing here. Add a 4.5 to both sides. And r equals a negative square root of 49.25 plus 4.5. All right, so now that as a decimal, we have r is approximately, and rounded here, uh, those two numbers as decimals are 11.518 and a negative 2.518. We're given this problem right here, 3x squared plus 20x plus 36 equals 4. We want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do here is subtract a 36 to both sides. That leaves me with a 3x squared plus 20x equals 4 minus 36, which is, well, a negative 32. I'm now going to divide all parts, both sides really, by 3. I like an a value, that's 1. So now we have x squared plus, well, 20 over 3x equals negative 32 over 3. Okay, so let's try to keep our fractions in line here. 20 divided by 3, I'm going to plug it into this formula, 20 divided by 3, all divided by 2, squared. Well, this comes out to be 100 over 9. Keep our fractions in line. We're going to add that 100 over 9 to both sides of the equation. So we have x squared plus 20 over 3, x plus 100 over 9 equals a negative 32 over 3 plus 100 over 9. Well, left-hand side is a perfect square, which is x plus 10 over 3, all squared. And then the right-hand side, negative 32 over 3 plus 100 over 9 comes out to be 4 ninths. All right. We can take the square root of both sides here. And what do we get? Well, we have x plus 10 over 3 equals plus or minus here. And the square root of 4 ninths simplifies to be a 2 thirds. All right, so we have 10, uh, x plus 10 over 3 equals plus or minus 2 thirds. That plus or minus, we can break down it into two equations. We have x plus 10 thirds equals a positive 2 thirds, and x plus 10 thirds equals a negative 2 thirds. Subtract the 10 thir thirds of both sides here, and I'll write it over here. Well, x equals going to fit it right here. So 2 thirds minus a, well, 10 thirds comes out to be a negative 2.6 repeating. Subtract the 10 thirds here. And x equals, well, negative 2 thirds minus 10 thirds is a negative 4. So our two solutions is x equals a negative 2.6 repeating and a negative 4. We're given this problem right here, x squared plus 7x minus 45 equals 7, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do is add a 45 to both sides. That brings us here to x squared plus 7x equals 7 plus 45, which is a 52. So now I'm looking at my b value, which is 7. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it. 7 divided by 2 all squared is a 12.25. So we're going to add that 12.25 to both sides of the equation. x squared plus 7x plus 12.25 equals 52 plus 12.25. All right. So now where we go from here. Well, the left-hand side is a perfect square. We have x plus 3.5 here, all squared. And the right-hand side simplifies, well, to be 64.25. We then have to take the square root of both sides, and we have x plus 3.5 equals plus or minus the square root of 64.25. Since it's plus or minus, we can write two equations. x plus 3.5 equals a positive 64.25, and x plus 3.5 equals a negative square root of 
0.25. Subtract a 3.5 to both sides. And we have x equals the square root of 64.25 minus 3.5. Do it again here. And we have x equals a negative 64.25 minus 3.5. Those two values come out to be the decimal approximated, rounded, 4.516 and negative 11.516. And so those two are our final answer. We're given this problem right here, n squared plus 19n plus 66 equals 6, and we want to solve this by completing the square. First thing I want to do is subtract a 66 to both sides here. That leaves me with an n squared plus 19n equals 6 minus 66 is a, well, negative 60. Now I'm going to look at my b value, which is 19. I'm going to divide it by 2 and square that. And that comes out to be a 90.25. So I'm going to add a 90.25 to both sides of the equation. n squared plus 19n plus 90.25 equals a negative 60 plus 90.25. Okay, now from here, left-hand side is a perfect square. n plus 9.5, all square, equals negative 60 plus 90.25 is a positive 30.25. I then want to take the square root of both sides here. And we have n plus 9.5 equals plus or minus, and square root of 30.25 comes out to be just for 5.5. We then, oh, whoops, <laughs> almost, not yet. We will subtract the 9.5, but first, it's plus or minus. Let's write two equations n plus 9.5 equals a positive 5.5, and n plus 9.5 equals a negative 5.5. Subtract a 9.5 now to both sides, and we're left with, well, 5.5 minus 9.5, and that's a negative 4. Do it again here. Subtract a 9.5 to both sides, and n equals a negative 5.5 minus 9.5, negative 15. And so our two solutions here are just negative 4, or n equals negative 4, and negative 15. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if it was, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math, minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use Minute Math, MinuteMathTutor.com.